Reggae has been outsourced and reworked, blended with Maori and Pacific Island influences in a place that's closer to the South Pole than it is to Jamaica. What would you do if Calamon come for you? What would you say if Calamon come for you? Yeah. For me, reggae music is a very powerful music. And uh, we're not we're not Rastafarians. We we, we have our own religion and, and our own language and our own culture, but we embrace reggae music. When we talk to Jamaican purists that that you know have grown up with reggae music, mm. and they say, "Hey, this Kiwi band doing reggae." Yeah, yeah. And it sounds good, you know, they kind of don't know how to take it, you know? They're kind of like, that's our music, man, you know? Reggae music was born in Jamaica, more than 13,000 kilometers from here in the late 1960s. Its songs fueled with themes of love, faith, and social injustice. The re reason that reggae is so universally popular is really because of the reggae rhythms and the melodies, but mainly the rhythms, because there's something so addictive about them that they just seep into your unconscious, whatever your language, whatever your culture. Reggae traditionally has been the, the music of the underdog, the music of the rebel, rebel, the music of the revolutionary. Reggae's chief revolutionary was the late Bob Marley, who helped bring this genre to the world. Marley had a catalytic effect on the Kiwi reggae scene when he played there in 1979. It's a tour New Zealanders still talk about. Well, 